in this video we will discuss um, sorry about the plane we will discuss number 19 so number 19 says use the information below to graph the function so there's a bunch of different pieces of information that they're giving me one of those pieces of information is that f is a rational expression which means it will most likely have asymptotes. And the domain of this expression is x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 5. It also tells me, which is more importantly here, is that there are no holes in the graph. Great, so don't have to worry about that. The next thing it tells me is it has an x-intercept of negative 1, 0, so that's this point here, with a multiplicity of 1. What that tells me is that I'm either going to cross this x, this intercept like this, or I'm going to cross it like that. I don't know yet until I have more information. And the y-intercept is 0 and 0.5 positive. So that's about right here. Okay. The next thing I know is that the vertical asymptotes are at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have a vertical asymptote here. which explains the domain why x is not equal to negative 5. And I have another vertical asymptote at 3. 1, 2, 3. And again, that explains the other part of the domain where x cannot equal 3. Um, and it says both have multiplicity of 1. I'm really not sure of the significance of that statement. Um, but, oh, yes I do. If they were to ask me to write the equation, then all that means is that the factors that these two guys came from would have an exponent of 1. Okay. Same thing here, the factor that this x-intercept came from would have a multiplicity or a power of 1. Horizontal asymptote, there isn't one. So no dotted horizontal asymptote. However, I have an oblique asymptote. So how do I graph that? I have 1. And then if I go down 1 and over 4, down 1 and over 4, down 1 and over 4. So you start to see um, oh, I didn't go over 4. I went over only 3, so that's not right. So from 1, I go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Down 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. So then now you can start to see how this um, is going to look. Okay, so you have this horizontal dotted line here that you cannot, you could cross it in the middle, the ends just have to trail off to it on the ends, okay? Then now it tells me that f of negative 7 is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have this point here. f of negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, is a negative 2. f of 2 is a positive 4. And f of 5 is a negative 2. And this is all the information that you need in order to graph it. Okay? Since all of these points exist, I know exactly what the graph is going to look like. You can only have one part of the graph to the left. Okay? So since my dot is up here, I cannot cross these on the ends. So I have no choice but to trail off upward over here and trail off in that direction of that line like that. In the middle will be another section of the graph between the two vertical asymptotes. And since I have um, these points here, we can see that it's going to be trailing off upward and then it's going to be trailing off downward. Okay, and I do cross through that x-intercept 
like we anticipated because of its multiplicity. And then finally, over here to the right of this vertical asymptote, you cannot cross that line, so you have no choice but to trail against it. You cannot cross this line, so you have no choice but to trail against it. And so the graph of your function should look something like this. Again, this is a multiple choice test, so you're going to be wanting to find the option that looks the closest to this hand-drawn graph.